Good morning. Good morning. Grace to you, peace to you, welcome to you. And uh, what a day for a daydream, except during the talk that Reverend Robin Kreider and I are having, then you cannot daydream during that. It's only, save that for sermons. All right. Welcome to everyone, especially welcome to those who are visiting with us today. And uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit uh, uh, unusual. Uh, well, <laughs> that's who we are. And uh, part of that is the worksheet. You'll see a vision worksheet that is there in your bulletin. Uh, we'll be actually taking uh, like 15 to 20 minutes to mill around and to uh, talk about this. And uh, there's some instructions there. Uh, take a look at those. And uh, those of you who are visiting and those who are fairly new among us, we want your participation in this because everybody has assumptions about what church is. And we want that feedback. We want that input. And uh, perhaps we're not even aware of what our assumptions are until they get challenged. And so this is all part of the of the picture and the kind of information that we want. So please, I hope that you will participate uh, in this. Also, there is a blood drive going on. I don't know if you noticed this great big vehicle out there. And uh, uh, there's still plenty of spots to sign up for that. And if you have some specific questions, I encourage you to see Lois there in the back. And she is, she is the person that uh, knows all, I was going to say knows all about blood giving, and uh, <laughs> there you, so there you go, whatever that means. And then, Karen, what what do you have for us? Yeah, you can use a microphone. Good morning, everybody. Behind the visioning worksheet, it's like classwork for church, I think, um, is this green piece of paper that says Meditators Unite. Um, I just wanted to say a quick word about that. After coffee chat next week or before choir the following Wednesday, we're just going to gather in the chapel, expect a short meeting of people who've had at least a passing interest in meditation. We will not be meditating during these meetings, but instead encouraging one another um, in our at home or out in the world meditation practice so that somebody will say oh my gosh y'all the other day I got up and cleaned my oven to avoid meditating and somebody else will say me too so well, it'll be a time to support one another share um, and encouragement and advice and uh, things that have worked things that haven't so I'm um, joining us in the chapel the third or the sixth um, and happy meditation in the meantime thanks Thank you, Karen. All right. And so this morning, we are going to uh, have a conversation with Reverend Robin Kreider. She is one of the founders of our congregation, and she was also instrumental in the putting together of our covenant, uh, kind of a statement of belief, uh, a kind of a vision statement for us. And we're going to have a conversation about that and then after that conversation, you're going to be encouraged to go through this worksheet that is in here and to give us your feedback. We want to collect that. Uh, and so there is a blue box on the horseshoe table in the back. So after you've given your input uh, and on your way out, just put it in that box and we will collect them. If you're the kind of person that needs more time and you need more time to think, and more time to pray, more time to meditate. Well, Karen has a class for you. And if you want to turn your worksheet in later in the week, that's fine as well, just to bring it into the office. So that's who we are. That's what we're doing. Take a deep breath. Let's center ourselves. You may think that you woke up this morning and made a conscious decision to be here. All of that is true, but I would also say that the spirit of life and love is working in your life and is working in the world in such a way that brings us together. 
because we have gifts to <coughs> offer each other and the word that we need to hear, a word about life. So welcome. And no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So Sands, would you please call us together? Hello. <laughs> this is January the 27th, 2019. This is the first time in history, and it will be the last time in history. So let us celebrate. Please stand if you're comfortably able. It is good to be alive, to share life with each other in this wonderful, evolving universe. We are most grateful. May wisdom dawn in us so we can see all things in clarity. Let us sing. May the unity of our voices remind us we belong to God and to each other. you before you sat down. <laughs> so it is my privilege again to lead us as we um, recite our covenant together. We covenant one with another to be that sensitive and responsive part of human society which perceives and responds to God's newest thrust in the midst of history. The uniqueness and greatness of every life is radically affirmed. Our task together demands a comprehensive view of life, always pointed intentionally to the future. Our life together involves us individually and corporately in study and worship, always maintaining a proper balance between proclamation of the word about life with the deeds which make life good. Those activities which eliminate age barriers, cut across religious dogma, reduce cultural parochialisms, and engage secular people with life's ultimate possibilities will be worthy of our best efforts. And continue to stay standing, please. In this day, made fresh, may we embrace this day in hope.
going to stand again. But I want to tell you a little bit about this song. It came from the Ecumenical Institute. It has been the theme song of Shadow Rock for 47 years. If you're a, a music leader and you don't have it in front of you, you have this little cheat sheet <coughs> that says the verses go, love, live, serve, die. <laughs> Things you need to know for this song. But um, it was the first song that I remember singing in Thunderbird High School years ago when we had our first service. So let's stand and sing it. Because this is my good side. Oh. <laughs> See, both my sides are good. Yes, so that's right. <laughs> that's right. It didn't matter because both of your sides are good. I got it. I think that's right. Robin, welcome home. Thank you. So glad that uh, you're here. Glad you agreed to do this. And uh, I hope it feels like home. I hope it feels safe. I hope it feels like coming back in some ways. Um, just glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, several times we wanna say this to you, and uh, um, I want to um, encourage your congregation, let's welcome Robin, okay? <laughs> uh, so, we don't have a lot of time, and uh, uh, so we gotta jump kind of right into it. I would rather have hours, really, to talk with you. And uh, so maybe, maybe we can have you come back, okay? Okay, so let's jump into it. The covenant. We just stood up, we cited it, we, you know, because there's a sense of uh, creating a sense of belonging to each other when we, when we say words together and sing songs together. So the covenant. Where did it come from? When we decided to 
become a new church uh, in history to, to see what impact we could make. Um, we decided that one of the first things we needed to do was to write a covenant. It took us weeks and weeks and weeks, by the way, to write this. It wasn't just an overnight thing. We had uh, developed a, um, a unit, um, a, a course, uh, for adults and for children and teens, by the way, uh, where we dealt with several of the uh, theological understandings, God, Christ, Holy Spirit, and the church. The question that we raised among ourselves was not surprisingly, what does it mean to be the church? And one of the things that we discovered very quickly was that we had people from a variety of backgrounds. You know, there was a time when you were raised in the Methodist church, you were a Methodist your whole life, Presbyterian, any of the denominations. We had such a rich, mixed variety of people, not only from Protestant denominations, but from Catholic and Jewish. We decided that maybe our first crack at being a church needed to be um, defining some of these theological terms that I mentioned that would give this new body of people sort of a, a, a target point from which to start. So that uh, a diverse group would have a shared language. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So God, Christ, Spirit, and Church. church. Mm -hmm. The Church as a social pioneer mm -hmm. was a big part of that because there were four theologians that uh, were really drawn on to bring this, this view of life and the role of the Church together. Right. So, if you were to start a church today, would you start with the same covenant? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I think that the verbiage in the covenant is still relevant today. There's no question about that. At the same time, there have been a lot of changes over the nearly 50 years now. So I guess I would look at that and see what uh, we decide is pertinent for where we are today as a starting congregation, and then just take it from there. But yes, I, 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 think, the, I think the covenant is still pertinent. It's, Our covenant is. I, I, I think so too. And, and I, I have to tell you that when I was looking for a church, and I stumbled upon Shadow Rock, and we kind of stumbled upon each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the members of the search committee said to me, it would be helpful in preparation for your interview with us that uh, you would know the covenant. And I said, okay. So I, I took a look at the covenant, and there were pieces of it I recognized from different theologians. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, but what I got most excited about is that this was the only church I had ever run into that really was asking the question, what does it mean to be in relationship to history? What does it mean to be on the right side of history? Mm -hmm. This was the only church I've ever uh, known mm -hmm. to have that as part of their DNA. Mm -hmm. is that, was that part of what you're doing? Uh, yeah, I, I guess one of, oh, the only one of the responses I would make to that is how you define right side. How do you define the right side of history? Yes. And that is all part of the process that you deal with in writing a covenant or a vision statement. And maybe right isn't the right word, and I, I don't have another one to fill in, but you know, right is opposed to wrong. I'm just really uh, cautious about being very specific. Yeah. You know, it's either wrong or it's right. And uh, oh, we're so, gonna we're gonna have a discussion then. Oh, That's right really now? good. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's because because um, uh, I have I have heard that Robin that that notion of one of the blessings of being in Shadow Rock is that you're not going to get into the shouting matches are these, these contests about right and wrong, mm -hmm. that it is a process of, 
of discovery, a very a much an existential individual kind of kind of uh, process. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that what you're affirming? Yeah, I think so. And I think that each, it, it, it's sort of like the situational ethics or situation ethics where, you know, it's one thing to say, you know, you, you tell your child, I don't ever want you to cross at that, that road crossing. Yes. Well, he comes there one day and the road is flooded. So is it right for him to do what mom said or does he have to come up with some kind of an alternate? So that um, in terms of whatever situation it is you're in, you make a decision, you lift that decision up to history, up to God, and you know that it's God's will for your life somehow. Now, that doesn't mean that it won't change tomorrow or next week, but, but th that's kind of the way I see it as a situ yeah. situation. And, and I don't in any way mean to um, uh, dispose or, or find an easy way to get out of, of uh, defining something as right or wrong. Right because obviously there are rights and wrongs, but I mean in the bigger picture. Yeah, so that, so, so for us, part of the, I, I think the evolution of Shadow Rock <laughs> was, was to begin very much in that, in that place where um, um, we want to hear and honor everybody's journey. Mm -hmm. and, and that by virtue of being a human being, you have a place here in this fellowship. Absolutely. Okay. And, and I hear wonderful stories about that, where, where people had this conversation with, with Bill Smith, for example, and, and, uh, and, and they would say, well, I'm Catholic, or I'm Jewish, yeah. or whatever, and, and he would say, well, you're a human being, aren't you? Right. right? Yeah. And, uh, uh, and I think there is an evolution. And um, I think that part of what's evolved here for Shadow Rock is that we've identified core values out of that journey so far mm -hmm. to say that inclusion and justice and spirituality as the orientation to life and that may be different to you as it is to someone else mm -hmm. you know so that we honor all these different spiritual journeys but we know inclusion we, we, we've decided that inclusion is better than exclusivity we decided that justice is better than injustice, that love is better than fear or apathy or greed. So there, there's those kinds of values that, that are, are guiding us. But to live those out individually and to live them out corporately as a body, right. man, that's a tough, tough road. Yeah. yeah, it is. I mean, there's no question about it. I remember that uh, a lot of the conversation we had evolving out of this was, you know, as an individual, um, how is it you go out to your job, to your being a mom, a dad, a parent, a, a teacher, whatever, how is it you go out into the world and be that just one, uh, as justice, just one, or that loving one, or that caring one, how is it that you carry out that mandate, if you will, um, and then it's coming back together corporately that we explore all those, uh, explored all those kinds of things. So, so Robert, do, is the idea to explore the, the journey, what that, to have a collective, to have a community, a spiritual family, to, to explore what that means for us individually? What about us acting collectively mm -hmm. how do how do we do that and i think there's i think there is a creative tension between that individual and corporate action mm -hmm. uh, did you did you experience that discussion or it, well yeah i'm sure that we did and of course at that time issues were different than they are than they are today we were just coming off the vietnam war and a lot of other things going on. I'll tell you, this is kind of, not to get off the subject or to uh -huh. sidetrack, but we had a, a kind of a formula that we used when this particular situation would come up about um, how involved we did or did not become. And that was observe, uh, weigh up, decide, uh, uh, judge, decide, and act. And if whatever it was that you were looking at 
you know, if you, if you decide that you're sitting there thinking, you know, maybe I need to go to the bathroom. So you observe that. You weigh up, you know, what would happen if you do or don't. You judge, you make a judgment about whether you're going to go and you decide, and then you act, you know. So there's no right or wrong answer to that. It's just using the criteria you have at hand with a social, situ a, a social justice situation, uh, immigration, uh, you know, whatever, using a formula like that, or lots of other ones I'm sure that are out there today too. Do I, you act on it or do you just, you know, bypass it? I heard the I heard the way of uh, trying to remember that is uh, orange yes, juice with dates, with dates added. added. Absolutely. Yes. You know, hardly a day goes by, honestly, that I don't think of the orange juice with dates added. Yeah. <laughs> orange um, juice with dates yeah, added. Yeah. As a formula to um, to evaluate mm -hmm. yeah. your relationship to a particular situation and what is what you are called upon to do. Yeah, and that acting does not mean that you're right or wrong about the decision that you're making. Mm -hmm. It means that in in your in your judgment based on all this criteria as a as a corporate body or as an individual body, uh, do you need to take action on this particular whatever it is? Okay. Uh, all right. And, and again, you, you know, we, we tried really hard to uh, school ourselves as a cadre that things can change tomorrow. I mean, one of the things we were trying to get away from was the absolutism, that this is absolutely the way you do something, or this is absolutely what is required. Um, we were an experimental church, and by the way, that was really a key, not unsurprising, but that was a key uh, uh, mm -hmm benchmark for us, being experimental, educationally, worship, music, everything. Did, when, you, when you say that you're a church without absolutes, does that, how, how do, do you remember people that, that said, you know, I can't live with that uncertainty? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I mean, uh, and if you, uh, if you stick to your own formula that you're trying to evolve here, you, you bless that decision and you know say we love you and that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, and yeah, there were there were people. So I've I've heard a saying that that I think would characterize this kind of uh, household ethic uh, for a church, and that is uh, um, to believe is human, to doubt is divine. Mm. Yeah. To doubt is divine. Yeah, and you really need to think about that. I mean, yeah. you need to think about that yeah. in your mind because that, yeah, that's, I, I like that a lot. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell, I, I'm going to share one, one more thing and I'm going to tell on our men's group. Okay? Oh. All right? So sure, absolutely. Do you, do you mind being critical of men? I try. <laughs> well, Marilyn, why are you laughing? <laughs> I try very hard not to be. I, I do, really. I, I know I, you do. You're I, such an incredibly gentle, wise spirit. Well, I don't know about that. You, you haven't seen me on my bad days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm going to tell on our men, I'm going to tell on our men's breakfast Good. group. Okay. So we were talking about the about this exercise that we're going to do, and and what is the role of a vision statement, and that perhaps a vision statement as something for our board, uh, for our congregation to bounce off of before we, as we observe and judge, weigh and decide and act, um, that, that we're, we're gonna bounce off of a vision statement, that it acts as kind of a compass for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we had had, if we had been more mindful of that, what would we have done with the issue of immigration that we've been so deeply involved in for the last four and a half, almost five years? And a part of the discussion that unfolded around the table was the idea that, that yes, people should be allowed to do that, but, in, but, but there seems to be a line that, that, that it becomes an imposition on the church, especially if we say what the line is, is that it's illegal. If what you're doing is illegal, 
even if it's to, to go or, or not to comply with an unjust law, then you've crossed, you've crossed the line of what the covenant's intention is. What do you think? Well, that's a tough one, I know. Well, again, you know, using a formula, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you, you obviously have to weigh up, in this case, for example, the illegal, possible illegality over against the, the need that is there. Um, I guess I, I, I'm thinking about all the, the words that are in the covenant. I guess I don't see the uh, necessary conflict. Did, did the uh, conversation include a specific on what that conflict might be or, or what they did not see in the covenant? Yeah, I, think, I think the conflict it was that was that if it's illegal, then you just shouldn't do it. In, uh -huh. in other words, it seems to me the assumption is that the church as an institution in society needs to be reflective and, and supportive, needs to be pro-establishment mm -hmm. of that society. And when you break the law, then you are, are going against established society. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the law, if you think it's unjust, then you work to change it, but you don't break it. Mm -hmm. And and the counter argument to that is that, there, that the only way that unjust laws are changed is when they are challenged, mm -hmm. hard challenged, mm -hmm. and, and not complied with, and maybe even broken. Mm -hmm. Where does the covenant guide us on this? Um. Did, you weren't ready. I, I forgot to tell you I was going to ask you that question. <laughs> <laughs> you what? I didn't know what you said. I forgot to tell you I was going to ask you oh, that question. Oh. I, I, By the way, we did not plan this just kind of big picture. We did not, yeah. we did not determine. You know, I, I, as you were talking, I was thinking about some of the other com, uh, uh, ideas and thoughts we included maybe uh, um, not as obviously in the covenant. But I mean, when you talk about, for example, justing love, you know, what does it mean to build just structures in the world? Well, sometimes, um, you can't put that within a framework to determine what it means to be um, a, a just person, a just society, um, a just program in this case. Um, I would have to say very honestly, and if any of your men are out here, this, is not, this isn't a personal kind of thing, right. it's just me sort of thinking off the top of my head. If, if it is honestly thought that, for example, the immigration may be breaking some of the laws, or I, I, I just think you need to go back and examine that and, and kind of weigh up what the needs are, what the opportunities are for this church to meet those needs, and, and in terms of breaking the law. And I am not suggesting that it's prudent to, uh, you know, break the law, but but I I think I think. The, the concern that I have is that we not reduce the um, idea of possibly being illegal to a law. You know, I, I, does that, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I, I'm so supportive of, the, of any of the immigration issues, so I'm not sure. So, you're, so, so you are admittedly biased yes. in my view, toward my view. Yeah, well, Thank yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> I got trapped in that one. <laughs> if that happens to be your view, then yes, I yeah, can. Yeah, so, Robin, I, I think that um, you and Bill, Eileen, Marilyn, Greg, so many, so many of, of the founding members of this congregation have been an incredible blessing to me mm -hmm. and to so many thousands of people unknown because of the journey that you started. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we can continue it with integrity. Yeah. And uh, I am very grateful to you. Will you, will you come back and talk with us sure. some more? I would be happy to do okay. that. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank you. Do you have any final, do you have some final words for us? Uh, 
can I just tell you sort yeah. of a funny story, really yeah. unrelated to, to what we're talking about? Absolutely. I ran across some notes the other day, the day that we broke ground for this amazing facility, facilities, was uh, May 16th, 1976. Three very important things happened that day. First was the groundbreaking, and prior to the groundbreaking, Greg and Con Englehorn and some other men came over here and dug up a huge amount of dirt, took it over to Thunderbird High School and placed it on the cafeteria floor for our, sermon that, for our service that morning. The second thing that happened, I was ordained on that day, which was very exciting by Shadow Rock. The third thing that happened, which depending on who you ask, may have been the most important thing that happened that day. The Suns, for the first time in their franchise history, made it to the finals. <laughs> <laughs> they beat wow. the Spurs that day and would go on to beat the Warriors and then the, the Celtics, who, who finally won the competition. But it was so funny because uh, the most wonderful people in our congregation opted to, to watch that game. And, uh. and they had Bill's blessing. Anyhow, that was no. But but I um, I I love our covenant. I mean, it's just to me, it's just sort of the end all and be all. And it's interesting. I don't have it up here, but I carry still carry my card in my wallet, and I look at it quite regularly. So. Well. And and I also wanted to say, <laughs> I never stop. <laughs> um, no, I also wanted to say the comments you said about uh, recognizing the efforts and works of the, the charter group of people. Uh, any of us looking down through history are so grateful for yourself and for people today who, have, uh, who, who just hang in there and are still, um, they're, they're like our kids, you know. We just, we're so proud of everybody. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. thank you for yeah. that. We'll take that as a blessing and encouragement to continue and okay. let this not be the last conversation, all right? Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank now, you. I'm going to let you go ahead and do what you have to do. All right. I'll get out of here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go back over and sit down. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Well, now is the vision statement exercise. If you take a look at uh, the, uh, uh, where is it? Do I have it? I have it somewhere. Anyway, you take a look at it, and it gives a little bit of background about, you know, what is a vision statement? What are the ingredients of a vision statement? It should be concise. It should be clear. It should be abstract. It should be on down the line, those kinds of things. Our covenant is, uh, is some of those things, but it's not all of those things. One of the things that I think that uh, we struggle with, for example, is conciseness. And the question is, is that we don't want to fall into being some kind of soundbite theology, easy answer kind of people, because that's just not who we are. But on the other hand, on the other hand, is there embedded in the covenant statement a vision statement that can be concise? one that we can gather around and one that can guide us and guide our conversations moving forward. We don't know, but we think that there may be, and we want to try this exercise to see if that can happen. So take a look at it, read through that. You can see there are examples of different uh, uh, vision statements uh, that the board and other members have talked about over the last several months. This is part of what the board has been doing in the visioning process over the last uh, several months. So we're sharing with you some of those fruits of that discussion. And now we're inviting you to for your input on this as well. So what we're going to do is you do that individually, give you about five minutes or so, and then begin to walk around and share that with each other, and then we'll call everyone back together in about uh, 15 minutes or so. All right? Is that clear? Any questions? Because I was so clear there are no questions. I love that. All right. So let's do that and uh, enjoy yourselves. Have fun with this. Okay. All right. Go. Hey. All right, friends. I understand that you may be just getting started in your conversation, and uh, I, that's good. It's always better to 
leave feeling more energized than tired out. So I hope you would continue this conversation over next door after our service with Coffee Chat. Talk with each other, get some uh, lemonade and some lemon bars from uh, Phil Meadows Lemon Trees and uh, help yourself with that and continue the conversation. Again, if you have a statement, we ask that you would turn it in. Uh, put it in the blue box in the back. If you need a little more time, keep it and then bring it. Uh, drop it off at the office or email us uh, what your thoughts are. We would uh, appreciate that. So I want to thank you for your participation. And uh, this is not over. This is just uh, the beginning of uh, more conversation. Thank you so much for doing this. And now we get to respond with a dedication offering of ourselves and our offerings. So go ahead. For our community gathered here and for the spirit that called us together and brought us to this place. In response to the word reflected on let us give of ourselves and our offerings for a celebration of faith.
Now for the dedication of our offerings and ourselves. Please stand if you're capable. <clears throat> With faith in the creative powers of life, with, With hope, hope for the future of life in this world, with love for all others who share this life with us, let us go forward together in peace. These are the times. We are the people. All of creation is blessed. May we love all and serve all. May God be with you. And also with you. Amen. <laughs> 